It wouldn't be fair to catch him now. Not after he spent ten minutes tiptoeing around the house. But he's not dressed warm enough. He'll warm up quick. Tom, you've got to talk to him about those rabbits. By winter, there won't be room in the barn for anything else. All right. All right, I'll talk to him.
Keep Robbie out of the woods till it's over. Ah!
be looking or shouting for you. I was just in the woods. That's all. Instead of being here and helping with the chores. Your rabbit hutches haven't been cleaned out in days. And I haven't even had time, lady, to give you your lessons. Can I help shoe him? Hold his head. I don't mean to nag you, Robbie, but no one's answered our advertisement, and I can't do all these things Daddy used to do. I know, Mom. I'll help. Of course you will, darling. Heard in town you've been needing help. Oh, yes. Are you interested in the job? Just to help out till you get somebody steady. Well, what wages would you expect? That's not important. It is to me. What are they paying at the logging camp? Eighty a month and keep. I'll pay ninety. There's no reason to pay more because you need somebody. Eighty a month and keep's fine. Well, I don't know what to say, Mr. Carter. Brad Carter. Mr. Carter, except that I appreciate it. That's okay. Your husband once did me a favor. I'm glad he did. My son and I haven't been too expert at working the farm. That figures. I was poking around before you were up. Is it all right if I use that room off the barn? Oh, well, yes, of course. Might as well get settled in before breakfast. Oh, uh, I meant to tell you before, Mrs. Sharon. I'm sorry about what happened to Tom. I liked him. just his way. Maybe he has personal problems and, and he doesn't feel like laughing. What are problems? No more questions. You just finish clearing that table. And then go tell Mr. Carter to hitch up the wagon. Are we going someplace? Yes, we're going to town to visit Dr. Gibbs. It isn't Sunday. I said no more questions. Now get a move on if you want to go with me. Yeah, a lot of fun. Fred Carter 
has problems. I should think he has problems, and it serves him right. The oracle has spoken. Oh, be quiet, doctor. This is serious. Not yet, but it'll be serious as major surgery before you get through. Well, I feel too close to Mary not to tell her. But if it is serious, I should know. Well, just study the look of the man. You'll see what I mean, Mary. It's as though he was going through God's punishment. A man sows what he reaps, mark my words. Well, I've been marking them for 15 years. Well, Mr. Carter said that Tom did him a favor once. Years ago, it seems Tom was the only man decent enough to tip his hat and say, how do you do to Mrs. Carter? He's married, then. As I said, Mary, God's judgment. Any man who'd marry a loose... No, I can't bring myself to say it. A whole team of mules couldn't stop you. Whatever she was before the marriage, she must have made Carter a good wife. Wife? A person like that's a disgrace to the name. Oh, some disgrace. From what they tell me, she had blue eyes and long black hair, shaped to match. Dr. Gibbs! Now don't you doctor me. You're giving your diagnosis, I'm giving mine. His wife died six years ago when the house caught on fire. She... I'm sorry, Mary, I did I... No, no. I wasn't thinking. That's all right, doctor. I asked you, I wanted to know. Maybe that's why he was kind enough to want to help us. He knows what it's like to lose the person dearest to you. So even so, Mary, he's no kind of person to have around a defenseless woman and child. I don't think the risks are that great, Bedelia. Besides, I have no other choice. So, I'll just keep on advertising for someone steady, and in the meantime, I'll accept Mr. Carter's help. Well, you know your business best, but if it was me... Well, it's I... not. You better get some more cookies and buttermilk. The kids are coming. Come. If you're still hungry, there's more stew. No, ma'am. Well, if you must scrape your plate, break up your bread and use your fork. I've got some things to do in my room. I don't see why I have uh, to use a fork if fresh. Robbie, if you say it, I'll spank you proper. All I was going to say was... Don't! Too much has been said already. Just clear this table. Oh, I brought some fresh bandage and ointment for your arm. Good enough. Roll up your sleeve. I'll manage better if you sit down. I hurt a bit when I pull it off. It's not healing very well. I'm sorry about what happened to dinner. There's nothing to be sorry about. I guess it's the school teacher in me. You know, I taught school for a while, that is, grade school, and uh, I guess it gave me the right to think I could correct everybody. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'd, I'd just as leaf eat my meals in here. Before or after you and the kid eat whichever is more convenient. Breakfast will be on the table, seven as usual, and we'll eat it together. All three of us. Yes, please. Three work shirts, 
What size you wear, Robbie? Oh, they're not for Robbie. You mean Fred's still hiding way out there? Well, Mr. Carter is working, not hiding. Yeah, naturally. Fred wears a size 16 collar and a 35 sleeve. 16 collar, 35. Uh-huh. Just three left. To me, when a man's not circulating, he's hiding. Naturally. Oh, I want some material for dress, too. All the blacks are over here. Not black. I like uh, a print, something cheerful. This will do fine. I don't like to advise customers, Mrs. Sharon, but this material clings kind of close. I know. Four yards, please, and while you're cutting it, I'll get the rest of our groceries. Yeah, the wind's due to rise. Is name Radovich a friend of Mr. Carter's? Friend? Oh, I suppose you might call her that, yes. You know, there might be some more snow before you get home, Mary. You mean she's Mr. Carter's girl? Oh, no more than three or four others around. Fred's kind of eligible, you know. Come on, boy, now don't loiter. Get the things in the sleigh and let Mrs. Sharon be on her way. Yep. Thank you, Ian. Not at all. Up to you. Get my tongue? No, Mom, no. It's not cold. Just tickle.
You okay? Yes. Yes, I think so. I've got breakfast just about ready. I'm afraid the oatmeal's kind of lumpy. I'm not much at cooking. I'm sure everything is perfectly all right. It is, isn't it? Sorry, Fred. I shouldn't have said that. That's okay. Forget it. No. No, I really am very sorry. I, I was very wrong. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, Mrs. Sharon, you couldn't do anything wrong. Getting some meat on your chops lately, kid. Fred, do I ever get strong like you? But stronger? Come on, get up there and drive him up another hundred feet. Who, me? Well, who else? <laughs> Me to put these things. Oh, just put them right down there. I'll put them away later. I just heard the carnival's coming to town. It's open on Sunday. Oh? What's the carnival, Fred? Well, it's, it's a kind of a tent city. You, you pay money to go in and look at things. There's fat ladies and sword swallowers and guys that eat fire. Eat fire? Sure. They like bulrushes and put them out in their mouths. Crush your heart? Yep. Is a fat lady as fat as Mrs. Campbell? Rob. What a thing to say. Make four of Mrs. Camp. Well, is there Fred? Merry go round? Merry what? Go round. It's, it's a thing that goes round with, with horses on it. Real horses? It's only a 40-mile ride, and, and, and as long as I've got the car, I thought maybe you would. Oh, you're, you're very polite. Come on, Mom. Come on. It'd be more fun for him if you go along. Well, if that's the way you two feel. You know, to tell the truth, I think I just wanted to be coaxed. Thank you, Fred. You're welcome. That's right, but I like it. Yeah, naturally. Hank and me brought along some package goods. In case you're interested in being brought back to life. Well, thanks, but uh, we've got to do the rides with the kid. I'll be seeing you. I can take Robbie through the carnival. I mean, if you'd like to join... I'd like to do what I'm doing. No sense paying attention to Mame. She's got rocks on her head. When they roll around, they pick up a little dirt. Hey, Robbie! Right up and buy your tickets to see Charlie Yetzel, the fat lady. She is stupendous. She is gigantic. She is colossal. She is a big... Jack, 
a new wrinkle, bringing your own babysitter to the carnival. <laughs> Come over here, son. Here's a nice little game for you. Give it a good swing and hit the bell and you'll win a cupid down there. Go ahead, son. Now watch him go ahead there. Two dollars with a prize for 20 cents. That'll be 20 cents, sir. 20 cents. I haven't been this exhausted since I had all four of the horrible Hennessy's in one classroom. Sounds like you're having a good time. Wonderful. I feel young all over again. Good. You look different, too. How? Oh. I don't know exactly. Maybe because you look so young. <laughs> well, now, that's really something to the mother of a seven-year-old. Are you sure Robbie knows where to find us? Positive. But I don't think he'll be interested in any lunch. Oh, I hope he doesn't get sick. Kid's entitled to get sick at his first carnival. Did you? I, n I never saw a carnival till now. Almost did, though, one time. It was me and my brother Billy and the old man. Only we never got there. And why not? The old man went in for a drink. Got stinking. Didn't come out till dark. That must have been heartbreaking for you and your brother. What, uh, what kind of stuff did you teach? Oh, the usual. Reading, writing... Arithmetic, geography. I, I quit first year in high school. Well, didn't your mother mind? She didn't seem to. Me and Billy ran away after a while. I got a job at a railroad gang. At that age? Well, I was a big kid. Close to been all filled out. They paid me full-grown wages. You know, this is the first talk we've ever had. Guess I've been going off a bit. Oh, no. No, I'm glad you've told me something about yourself. You are? Well, yes, I am. Why? Well, now, that's a silly question. Well, people who are friendly usually talk about themselves. Well, I wouldn't know. Well, of course you would. You've, you've probably discussed your childhood with your friends. No, nobody. Well, surely you must have exchanged confidences with your wife. We had an agreement. Never to talk about what was past. Hers or mine. Here comes the kid. Hey, Mom! I never thought a kid could get this happy. talking time about me living here. Rolling Rock's mame, I suppose. Her and, and others. They've got no right. No right at all. That never stops gossip. They're, they're saying it would be different if the kid had a father. I guess that's true. Well, here's your coffee. You think the kid likes me? Of course I do. On, on the way back from town, I was I was wondering if, if maybe you shared the kid's feelings. I feel we're friends, Fred. Good friends. You've been very kind to Robbie and me. I, I can run a farm better than anyone in this province. I've, I've never needed anyone to help me take care of a place just... Any kind of repair jobs, anything at all. One, one spring, I, I plowed and planted 57 acres of my own, and I, I, I built a whole new barn. Even, even the cross beams and, and stalls. No, Fred, don't. Please don't.
It's all right, darling. Something just fell down in the barn. Come on, Mommy will put you back to bed now. We go. Is Fred back yet? Yes, he is. Robbie, you like Fred, don't you? Sure. He took me to the carnival. Would you like it if Fred stayed here always? Is he going away? Well, I don't know. I think he might be. Why? Don't he like us? Of course he does, darling. Would you like him to stay and be your father? My father's dead. I don't mean your real father. I mean... Well... If Mommy married someone, he'd become your stepfather. What do we need somebody like that for? Well, darling, I'm, I'm not sure I know how to explain this properly, but... Mommy wouldn't marry Fred or anyone unless you agreed. Well, would it change anything? No, darling, it wouldn't. Just like before? Everything? Everything. Except that Fred would sleep here in the house with us instead of the barn. Oh, is that all? Sure, Mom. Then it's okay. Go ahead and marry. <sighs> Good night, my darling. I'm sorry for the way I behaved, Fred. I really am. Very sorry. Well, it's not that important. I'm stocking in enough feed to last through tomorrow, and I'll try to find you a new man in town. I don't want a new man, Fred. I'm happy with the one I have. I mean, I could be happy with the one I have, but only if he'd marry me. you're good, Mary. I tried very hard. part of the cake for you. Look. I don't want it. You kissed him. Darling. But that's part of the ceremony. 
You kissed him again afterwards. I thought you wanted Mummy to marry Fred. Will you have to kiss him again? Well, yes, of course. Lots of times. Darling, I don't want you to feel that way about Fred. He's my husband, but you're my son. My very own son. And I could never love anyone as much as you. Nobody? Nobody. Ever as much as you. Go feed my rabbit. He hardly ate a thing. It's too much wetting for the kid. Fred, we're going to have to gentle Robbie for a while. He's a bit jealous. Of who? You. He saw you kiss me, and well, I'm afraid the wedding ceremony was something of a shock to him. He thinks I'll stop loving him. What's the matter with a kid? He's only a child. Oh, sure, that's right. Well, I better catch up on my chores. Fred. Would you do something for me? Anything you want. Don't call Robbie kid. I didn't mean anything by it. I know you didn't. It's just that it upsets me a little. Well, you should have told me before. When you want something from me, you just tell me right off. I will. And, and, and if I do something isn't proper, well, tell me that too. I don't know much, but I can learn. How you doing, Robbie? Come here, man, will you? Look, Robbie, it's it's uh, it's this way. I I don't know much about being a father, but well, I'll do what I can. Okay? Tell you what, you want something, you just ask for it. If I can get it, I will. For instance, uh, on the next trip to town, I'll buy you a rifle. How's that? I don't want a rifle. Of course you do. Then we go hunting. Might even let you set the traps. Can I go now? Nobody's holding you.
of her misery. No! Don't! Don't! And let her suffer, Robbie. It's much kinder this way. At least we got some venison out of it, Morkop. And now is as good a time as any to teach you how to dress out a deer. No! Come here. Now, I want to show you. No! I don't want to look. I don't want to. Well, look, I just want you to watch, to learn. No! You know, bloody. I well, don't want to. You damn well will. Now, look, you're not going to turn out to be another Billy. No, no, it's all bloody. Mama, Mama. Robbie? Mama! Now, watch. Robbie? Robbie? What happened to him? Nothing that a good whipping wouldn't cure. Mama's here now, Robbie. Mom is here. Don't let him grow up, will you? He's worse than a little girl. In the aisle hand. Don't touch him. Don't you touch him. Well, suit yourself. I tell you, he's faking. He doesn't need a doctor. I know what's wrong with him. I've seen it before. The sight of blood makes him throw up. He's, he's just another little coward. Fire Tower 3, Fire Tower 3. There's some kind of trouble at the Sharon farm. They just fired a flare. Over. The doctor says he's going to be all right. If Doc Gibbs says it's so, believe me, it's so. I have to make out my report, Mrs. Sharon. Mrs. Crowder, any more details? No, nothing else. Only what I've told you. Robbie can't stand to see anything die or the sight of blood. More coffee, Sergeant. Thanks, no. I'm sorry to have brought you all this way for nothing. That's my job. Look, Mrs. Carter, if you're afraid of her, I mean, if you're worried about something, I could stay in the barn for a day or so. Well, thank you. There's no need for that. Have you any more flares? Several. Well, in case anything else develops. I mean, if you should need some kind of help, any time at all, just fire two flares in rapid succession. And I'll be out here real quick. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Goodbye.
What did you do to that boy? Not a thing. Then what put him in a state of shock, scared him out of his wits? Look, doctor or no doctor, I don't have to answer your fool questions. Whatever happened, he had coming to him. I see. What have you got against the boy, Carl? He's a coward, that's what, like my... He's like somebody I used to know. Who told you Robbie was a coward? Nobody had to tell me. I saw it with my own eyes. I don't believe you. Well, if, if, if you'd seen him when I stuck the knife on that deer, you, you'd know it too. He was, he, was, he was scared crazy when he saw the blood. And that made you mad? Mad enough to break his neck. But you didn't do anything to him. Mad enough to break his neck, but you didn't do anything? Well, somebody had to teach him not to be a coward. Oh, that's a strange way of teaching Get off my land, you... Very well. What's happened here won't go any farther. It's not important enough to be told around. All that matters is that you did something to Robbie because he reminded you of someone else because you think the boy's a coward? Look, I'm not ashamed of what I did, and I know he's a coward. Because he sickened at the sight of blood? Let me tell you a few case histories. I saw a man who won the Victoria Cross get sick at the sight of blood. I knew a paratrooper who fainted when I gave him a hypodermic. And a heavyweight fighter who was scared to death to pick up a live bird. Does that mean anything to you? A man's afraid or is not, and nobody can tell me different. Oh, no. Every man is afraid of something. Even you. <laughs> not me. I've never been afraid of anything in my life. Well, maybe so. Maybe so, Fred. But tomorrow is another day. I hate him. You must never say things like that. I hope you make him go away. Will you, Mom? I can't, Robbie. I'm married to Fred. He's a bad man. He likes to hurt things. Stop it, darling. Someday I'll hurt him. You'll see. I'll hurt him bad. No, darling. No. Try to sleep now. And Mama will look in on you later. Come on, down we go. That's a good boy. Gonna wait? I guess you think I meant to hit you, but I didn't. You know that, don't you, Mary? I. I just didn't know what I was doing. Is that the way it happened to Robbie, too? You just didn't know what you were doing. What I did was for his own good. Oh, wait, Mary, wait. I'm sorry. I only wanted you to know that... I swear up and down I'll never touch you that way again. That's right. You'll never touch me that way or any other way. this door. Are you going to open it? No. 
Get out. It's no good this way, Mary. I know I've been wrong in some things, like... like last night, I mean. Well, listen to me, Mary, will you? If, if, if you want me to say I'm sorry, I will, even, even about the kid. I'd like to get finished with my work. I'm only trying to say that no matter what, I love you, Mary. And, and I don't want to hurt you. Ever again. Well, what else do you want me to say? What else do you want me to do? It's of no interest to me what you do or what you don't do. Just as long as you don't hurt my son. I wouldn't hurt him. You already have. Before you came here, he was the happiest child alive. And now he's filled with fear and hate. And you did that to him. And I'll never forgive you for that as long as I live. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Throw it. Go on. Show me you've got that much guts. Come on. Come on. Throw it. Come on out here. Now sit down. Already. Look, this is supposed to be a family, remember? 
and families eat together. Now sit down and eat. Do what he says, Earl. I don't give a damn if we never talk. Robbie. Robbie, let me have your plate. Makes no difference to me. Not one bit. Are you going to talk to me or not? Well, you can both go there. Hell! Where is he going? I don't know. I hope he never comes back. I hate him more than anybody. Robbie, go to your room. this way, so I thought I'd look in. I'm glad you did, Doctor. Just saw Fred heading for town in a big hurry. Forced me into a ditch. I'm sorry. Well, he did the forcing, not you. Well, since I'm out here, I'm going to let you give me some coffee and cake and uh, some interesting conversation. I'd like that. You'd better bring your bag along. Robbie? Me. I'm afraid I'm pregnant. Afraid? There's nothing to worry about. Second child's always easier. How far advanced are you? Two months, I think. That what got Fred to celebrating? No, he doesn't know. And I hope you won't tell him. You don't want this baby, do you, Mary? Ever since I found out I was pregnant, I prayed not to have it. You can't mean that. Yes, I do mean it. A child should be conceived in love, like Robbie was. And this baby was conceived in fear and hate. Bottle of rye, Mary. You just wait your turn. Tell you what, sweetie, if it's for our day tonight, buy us something with a little more bounce. You know, 100 proof. I'll take this one. You have got no special privileges around here anymore. You just wait until I'm ready for you. Who are you laughing at? It's you, farmer. I'm laughing at you. Now get out of my way. You want trouble with me, farmer? Yeah, no trouble. That's what I need.
You want trouble? You're going to get a valley full. Not from you, he isn't. You're under arrest, Carter. Marty said he told you about me being in jail. Yes. Well, I've got no excuses for it. I had it coming. Your things are in the barn. Um, I, I did a lot of thinking while I was locked up. Calling this my land, and it's not. Calling you my wife. But that's not so either. I've, I've got no right trying to take over where I'm not wanted. In, in four or five days, I'll have the crops in. Put things in shape for you and the boy. And then I'll check out. Unless you figure to need me for something more. No, we won't be needing you. I'm selling the farm. Maybe that's best.
baby. I've lost the baby. The baby? Oh, Dr. Gibbs, get the doctor. No, don't. Don't move me. Get the doctor. The very good. There's up. for you to say that despite rain or hail or sleet or snow or rainwater in the storage bin, Bedelia's pie is the finest of the fine. I'll go to the bath. Quit that, I can hear you. Quit it. Bedelia. Intravenous Bedelia, 5% glucose and saline, 1,000 cc. Help me, help me. Lift her gently, carefully, careful. Take it easy. 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 You and Sarah get Carter inside, any one of the bedrooms. Plasma. Right away. She's alive, just. Tremendous loss of blood. Hurry, up, Bedelia. Everything's okay. Surgery is over and Mary's quite comfortably asleep. She's not dead? Oh, no. Mary's all right. Was it... Was it what she thought? Yes. A miscarriage.
was my kid. She never even told me. I never even knew. She can have more children. Not mine. She don't want any kid of mine. Things can change now, Fred. What you did for her can change him. No. It's like the time when the blizzard, it'll, it'll pass and be forgotten. And anyway, what's the good? Things like that are nothing to build on. There isn't going to be a, a, a blizzard or a hurricane every time she gets to thinking what I... what I did to her kid. Now, you're in no shape to get up. I'm okay. Take my word for it. Where are my clothes? Oh, well, Ian brought you these from the store. Fred, about the boy. I know what you're going to say, Doc. If I could make up to the kid, it would work out. I can't. I want to, but I just can't. The boy will change. Not after what I did to him. He even wanted to kill me. Got up in the loft with a pitchfork and me down below. If only he'd thrown it. Might have had some respect for him. But all he did was to bust out ball and then drop it. That's normal enough. Believe me, Fred, that's absolutely normal. No, sir. A man's scared or is not goes for kids, too. Mary will get worried when she wakes up and finds that the boy isn't here. When he saw me come home, he called up for the woods. He goes there all the time. Tell his mother that. It, it might help calm her down. It'll come better from you. No. We haven't talked any in a long time. Yeah. Tell her I'm, I'm, I'm glad she's okay and uh, that I'm checking out like I, I... Oh, hell. Better tell her I'll find the kit for her before I leave. But the river's all flooded and the bridge is out. I can try. Why did she have to kill my kid, Doc? He... He never did anything to her. Isn't there any news at all? Punishing yourself won't help. The rangers are trying to get to the farm, but it won't be much before dark. Oh, if anything happens to Robert... <sighs> what is it? You're keeping something from me. Robbie's hurt. Oh, no, no, he isn't. And I'm not keeping anything from you. Then why did you turn away like that? Fred Carter saved your life last night, and you've yet to ask me how he is. Oh. It's just that I'm so worried about Robbie. Obviously. I'm afraid, Doctor, you don't know all the facts. I'm afraid I know some facts that you don't even suspect. I even know that your son tried to kill your husband with a pitchfork. That's a lie. Well, of course it is. It's always easier to see nothing but virtues in people we love and nothing but vices in those we don't. Oh, that's not true either. As true as the fact that you didn't tell your husband you're pregnant. I had my reasons. Big, strong ones, no doubt. Last night, Fred Carter carried you six miles through the worst storm this country ever saw. Do you realize what a man must feel for a woman to do what he did? I only know he almost killed my son. But why? 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 Did you bother to find out? You didn't, but I did. I went down to Brownsville to look up the probation records when he went to jail. Gave all the background. Did you know that his wife didn't have to die in that fire, but that his weak-kneed, blubbering brother Billy could have saved her life? But he couldn't stand the sight of suffering and blood. So when he saw her there, bleeding and broken, Pinned under a burning log, he ran away screaming and left her to die. Oh, no. No. 
It's true, every burning memory of it. That's why Fred wasn't seeing Robbie that morning at the farm. He was seeing his own brother, Billy. And you've crucified him ever since without ever bothering to find out why he did what he did. Would you mind leaving me alone? Mind? No. Not at all. Oh, yes. Fred told me to tell you he's glad you're well. And that he'll find your son for you before he leaves. Mom's worried about you, kid. Now, why don't you come with me and see for yourself? Now, come on. Where are you, kid? Okay, okay. Now, quit running and we'll talk things over, huh? We'll talk... Yes, yes, please. Please, Rip. Oh, 
Oh, never Wait. mind. Never mind, it's some. There's something else I want you to know. I... I wouldn't hurt your mom for anything. I love her as much as you do. Looks like nobody's home. Here they come. Hey, Ma! You seem to be welcome. Well, at least half welcome. Well, it's time I got moving. Don't rush off. I'll have supper started in a minute. Not today. I have things to do. In fact, both of us have, Mary. Things to do, I mean. Be out to see you in a couple of days. So Dr. Gibbs drove me home. Gosh, I'm glad. Aren't you glad? Come on, Mom. I want to show you something. Come on. Hurry up, Fred. Hurry Wonderful surprise in the whole world. Fred! Fred! Hey, Fred, wait! No, Robbie, not now, darling. Why not? It's okay. Oh, I'm sure it is, but I think he wants to give us a little time together. Robbie told me what happened in the woods. How he led you into the quagmire. And then got me out. He, he didn't do anything wrong. He's, he's a good kid. I, I mean, a, a good boy. No, I'm the one who was wrong. It's a wonder you didn't shoot me for what I did to him. I guess I wanted to. I know I thought of it. For a while, I, I was so mixed up, hating you so hard. 
I didn't even want your baby. Now all I want is your forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. More than I have a right to expect. E either way, it's, it's, it's all finished. Robbie said you told him you loved me. Well, my, my going away won't, won't change that. I, I, I'll never stop loving you. Or, or, or remembering things. Listen to me, Fred. Whether you believe me or not, I want you to know I wanted your baby. I swear before God I did. Not mine, you did. Yes, yours. Yours. I wanted your baby as much as I ever wanted Robbie. Must, must be close to supper time. Yes, it is. Well, maybe, I mean, if you, if you don't mind, maybe I could leave after supper. Oh, Fred. Well, aren't you going to hold me?